Hey guys, Asher again at Flight Sim Reviews, and today we're going to be looking at Microsoft's newest flight simulator title, simply titled Flight. Uh, this is the 11th installment in the Microsoft uh, long-running flight simulator franchise, and uh, it's been pretty controversial, to say the least, among the flight sim world. So anyways, uh, my personal thoughts so far is uh, it does have a lot to offer just out of the box. Uh, it's a really, really good, just easy pickup VFR, uh, you know, sim just to kind of cruise around. Uh, it really doesn't have those hardcore elements in it yet uh, that you would expect from a title like FSX, etc. Uh, but this is much easier to get into, which was their goal. And uh, since it is a downloadable content-based title, uh, it's reasonable to presume that uh, Microsoft can, of course, add a lot of the... Uh, features in later uh, that are missing now or uh, if the add-on product developers decide to support this title uh, they can integrate into the software of course this is one of the first sims that was made not by the aces team uh, it doesn't exist anymore but some of the developers are still with microsoft uh, and of course if you get into the configuration files and so on and so forth in microsoft flight you'll see a lot of commonality between this and prior titles so uh, getting into the config files and uh, changing things uh, there's quite a bit of similarity so uh, there's definitely some older flight simulator genetics in this title uh, today I just want to go through the menu system and show you what this sim has to offer uh, it's a little different than previous titles uh, which is both again a good and a bad thing uh, uh, hopefully I'll show you some things that you haven't seen before in flight or uh, at least give you a quick walkthrough. Of course it's free on Microsoft's website. Uh, you can download it for yourself, give it a try, uh, and if you decide to get a gamer tag you get a extra aircraft. So and creating a gamer tag is uh, totally free so uh, you might as well you know sign up. Uh, you do get an extra aircraft and it takes about 30 seconds to sign up. So uh, that being said, let's get started. Uh, we'll fir first go under play, and you'll see, wow, this is a lot different than FSX and previous flight simulator titles. Uh, this is pretty much your launching screen to fly. Uh, at this point, this is pretty much a VFR sim, guys. So you're not going to find a lot of IFR uh, goodness in here. If you like flying uh, VORs, etc., uh, you're not going to find it here. You can shoot approaches with some of the downloadable content aircraft. Uh, the ILS is in here, uh, but that being said, uh, don't expect to be you know practicing your VOR uh, <laughs> techniques on this sim. It's it's not here yet, so or it may never be. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so this is the area in which we have uh, in Microsoft Flight so far. You can get a world view, but it's pointless since this is the only area that's supported. Uh, this is of course Hawaii. Uh, and you'll see there's a color different differentiation here between the blue and the green. Uh, the green is what I have and the blue is what is uh, DLC for I believe 1600 Microsoft points or 16 US dollars. Uh, that I own the these other islands on my other account. Uh, I do have them but I just wanted to create this account to show you what you get just out of the box. Uh, Another new thing is, if we just scroll over here to Hawaii, the big island, uh, the challenges automatically show up on the map where they are. So uh, that is quite a bit different than previous flight simulator titles, uh, obviously. Uh, it's a little easier to click and do a challenge. So if I give this one a click, it would be the Stearman Landing Challenge. So uh, just a nice, quick, easy way to get in that way. And, of course, you have a bar to the left, uh, which gives you uh, pretty much all the functionality of the simulator. Under Activities, we have Missions. Uh, this is a little different than FSX and prior titles. Uh, these are really about training. Uh, you're not going to find a whole lot of, uh, how shall I say, uh, challenging things in here, even though uh, you did before. So, under Missions... Uh, you'll just see that there's an intro to the Stearman and a landing tutorial for the Icon A5. And over on the right, you'll, of course, see the airport name. Uh, Icon A5 is the aircraft and how long, in general, it will take to complete. Uh, 
I wish the airport name was the identifier, but I think this is just more showing uh, the more casual approach that is flight that's Microsoft's take taken. Uh, going back, challenges are exactly what they sound like. They are challenges. They're more like the missions from FSX. So uh, flying through rings, flying through mountainous terrain, courses, landing, uh, landing in bad weather, etc. And uh, there is a new XP system in the game uh, that you can level up your pilot character, sort of like an RPG or a first-person shooter. Uh, you can gain levels. Uh, so far, all I can find that the levels do is they unlock paint jobs for the aircraft. So uh, uh, it doesn't it doesn't change really your abilities in the sim or anything. It's just an aesthetic thing. But I'm sure if you go online, you can brag if you're top level and you've completed all the challenges. And though there's also three uh, stages of completion. So uh, there's some replay value there, guys. You know, if you score 800 XP. You know, maybe you run through it again and get all the XP so you can rank up. So, uh, some of the missions uh, for the hardcore guys are, are pretty easy. But, uh, you know, if you're new to the Flight Simulator series, uh, they're pretty fun. Uh, they'll get you into just basic aircraft control, uh, you know, stick and rudder stuff, turn coordinator, uh, you know, pay, you know, not just totally stick flying the aircraft. Uh, so, that's probably enough about that. And Aero Cache Hunt. Uh, for whatever reason, every time I click this, it, it gives me the uh, tutorial on my copy here. So I'm not going to bother, but essentially arrow caches are a symbol that is, are symbols that are hidden around the map that you uh, hunt around to find, and you get XP if you find them. And there's a plug for uh, Microsoft's Bing search engine. They want you to get online and uh, do a search to try and find them all through their search engine. So uh, a little marketing there on Microsoft's part. Uh, they're worth different XP depending on how hard they are to get or how well they are hidden. So uh, hopefully that gave you a look at that. You can check that out on your own. And free flight. Uh, you're going to go ahead and notice that the icons changed over here. And uh, you can just go ahead and fly. You can change the conditions. Uh, you can load a free flight and of course your legend to what's going on over here. And if we go over to Hawaii here you can see that uh, our airports are now shown, and uh, that is an easy way of just uh, getting set up to fly. So uh, if I want to take off from Kona International, you're going to see that uh, that brings up the airport page. It's going to give you the identifier, elevation, and airport communications uh, frequencies, which is kind of nice. It's nice it's all uh, generalized. Uh, unfortunately, there is really no ATC in flight, so uh, these frequencies are placeholders at this point in time. Um, I don't know if they're going to eventually add it, and it's just not in yet, or what. They do give you the frequencies, but again, there's really no air traffic control, So, and there's no uh, window, if you're used to it, in FSX that comes up, so you can request takeoff clearance. Um, and it does show you uh, the length and surface of the runways and you can start in the air or start on the runway so uh, there is no start at the gate option any longer guys uh, so if you enjoy doing a cold start and taxiing out to the runway uh, you're gonna have to <laughs> taxi back from the runway shut down and restart so uh, uh, it's again this is more of Microsoft's uh, casual approach to this title uh, I hope eventually that down in this list we will be able to start at gates uh, the gates are at the airports they're just not there's just no way to start there at this point so uh, that's that's kind of a bummer uh, one of the other things that I want to go ahead and show you is each airport has a job board and basically they're little missions that you can do for XP uh, sometimes they're flying to another airport to deliver cargo etc uh, and you, of course you gain more XP by doing these. They're just some more missions, but they're per airport, not just in the big mission list. Uh, hangar. Uh, just as it says, it's your hangar, guys. Uh, of course this is the Icon A5. Uh, you have a couple options. You can do paint schemes, uh, and you can do fuel load. Uh, the fuel load page is kind of nice because it shows you your aircraft weight and uh, the range it'll give you in theory. Uh, and of course it's just a slider 
to adjust. Also, paint schemes. Uh, mine are mostly locked on this account, but uh, you can change the paint job as you rank up uh, with your aircraft. Uh, also, here's the Stearman. Right now, you can get the Mall M7 260C and the uh, P51D Mustang. They're both payware at this point, and uh, you can go ahead if you want and download a free preview which actually just shows you the exterior of the aircraft so uh, nothing too exciting about that uh, unfortunately the mall is fully decked out with a virtual cockpit the P51 you'll see it says basic uh, it just ha has no virtual cockpit so that's really a bummer so and you can see it's half the price almost that the mall is so uh, disappointing to say the least that there's no cockpit in the P51 yet uh, I don't know if they're planning to include that or if it'll just always be a lower cost aircraft. Uh, I'm kind of surprised they would release an aircraft without a virtual cockpit in this sim. Uh, anyways, pilot profile. Uh, you can of course see uh, how far you've gotten in your career, all kinds of stats, uh, and you can change your pilot portrait. Uh, these are all kind of different. Here's kind of a Amelia Earhart, I guess, sort of one. Uh, I don't know, I've never met any pilots that really look like these guys or dress like these guys, but uh, I guess uh, if, you, if you think one of these guys looks like your kind of pilot, you have four to choose from. Uh, you can look at your awards uh, in the sim and which ones you don't have yet. There's 106. And your achievements, of course, will bring down the Xbox Live pain, and you can go ahead and go through that uh, if you're into getting achievements. Uh, and of course, multiplayer. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave that for you to discover. Multiplayer uh, supports 16 people on Microsoft servers. Uh, it's pretty hassle-free, uh, but it's also pretty limited in what you can do. So, uh, uh, it's uh, FSX was really a pain in the butt to get in a uh, to get in a multiplayer session. That's why most people just use that sim or programs like that. So, uh, it's nice that you can just hop into multiplayer and kind of fly around with other guys if you want. That's pretty streamlined. And we'll hop back to the main menu now. Um, of course, since it's DLC uh, based, you're going to see the second option right here is Buy Hawaii. And this entire left pane is chewed up by Hawaiian Adventure Pack Purchase. Uh, you can scan through uh, different things to purchase. Uh, so anyways... Uh, of course, it's DLC, so this is Microsoft's way of pretty much marketing towards you. Uh, there's, uh, it, since it is DLC, uh, it's just kind of annoying that it's everywhere to me, I guess. Uh, you know, if I want to buy something, you know, I can figure it out. I don't need, like, three things on my screen saying buy, but uh, there it is. Options. Uh, the options are quite a bit different than what you're going to go ahead and find in FSX or previous titles. They're much simplified, uh, but you do get less control over the sim. Uh, I have a pretty powerful computer, and the sim runs 60 FPS uh, with no problems on my machine. Uh, if you have a weaker machine, uh, you can just do a simple overall graphic setting, or you can go in and, of course, uh, set the settings per your machine. So, uh, it just all depends on what kind of machine you got, uh, but it is nice to give you just a simple, uh, you know, hey, I want it all on low or medium, or you can go in and tinker by yourself. Uh, unfortunately, you can't control draw distance, uh, etc. Uh, I'm sure it can be done in a config file somewhere, but at this point, uh, there's just no way to set exact cloud draw distance and stuff like that, which was common in FSX to control performance. Uh, you can choose full screen, which most people want, unless you're playing windowed guys. And vertical sync uh, explains what it is, but if you guys don't know, it just it locks the frame rate to your monitor. So essentially, uh, even though maybe your GPU can run this sim at 150 FPS, uh, why heat the graphics card up? Just leave vertical sync on, and it'll lessen the workload on the GPU, let it run cooler. Uh, there's really nothing to lose, guys. You know, vertical sync comes into play a lot more if you're doing, like, first-person shooters and you care about mouse lag, because uh, it actually drops extra frames sometimes. Uh, but anyways, in a flight sim, uh, I always leave it on. Gameplay, guys. Uh, this is a new increased stability. 
So basically, this uh, stops, stalls, spins, uh, strange aerodynamic, uh, you know, uh, flight characteristics that are experienced when you're stalling, etc. Uh, so that uh, it basically puts it on easy to fly mode. Smooth braking. Uh, it basically modulates the brakes. I have rudder pedals, so I tip them up, left, right brakes, but. Uh, if you're just using a stick, you might want to give this a try because otherwise, uh, basically, the brakes are all on or all off if they're mapped to a button. So, like a tail dragger, you'll tip it over if you're rolling out on a landing. Uh, auto mixture, pretty explanatory. Uh, propeller effects, guys, that's your asymmetrical force from the propeller spinning on the aircraft. Uh, some know it as P factor. Uh, you can go ahead and Wikipedia that if you want to learn about it. It uh, just basically is the torque going through the airframe from the propeller and it causing the aircraft to want to twist. Uh, it's actually pretty well modeled in flight, guys. Uh, I'll get more into that when I go into the flying portion of my review, but uh, it, it's actually pretty well modeled. There's quite a bit of P-factor in this sim, so uh, a lot more than I ever saw in uh, FSX. Um, in fact, I think it may be a little overkill. Uh, the HUD, you can have a he heads-up display that uh, gives you basically everything your instruments are telling you on an easy-to-read screen on the top. Uh, I leave it off for realism. Uh, if you're a casual gamer, you'll probably want to leave it on. Uh, it's easier to find your waypoints and stuff. Subtitles for people talking on missions. Points of interest on the map will show up. Text chat for multiplayer, obviously. Uh, and, yeah, of course... If, you can control, I guess, you know, if when you pause the game, if the window stays in focus. Uh, I don't even know why that option exists, but hey, if you, you really want that screen not to fade when you pause, you can stop it. And of course, head bob, which kind of gives you a little, uh, uh, you know, makes it look like you're moving forward or backward in the seat, depending on the G-forces on the aircraft. Uh, uh, I haven't used my track IR with this title, so I went ahead and left it on. Audio, pretty simple, guys. There's a master, music, uh, user interface sound, sound effects and dialogue sliders, and game controls. Uh, this is essentially uh, in the sim game controls. Uh, these are just general controls, and you can see my Satex stick. You can map to it. Uh, camera, eye point, map, uh, checklist, stuff like that is in this menu. And the menu I've been wanting to get to, aircraft controls, okay? Um, flight is much less in-depth than FSX when it comes to aircraft controls. Uh, I can't say it enough. Uh, it's much simpler. If you're looking for, you know, to map, uh, you know, uh, the emergency spoiler system, you're not going to find it here, guys. Uh Really simple controls, ailerons, brakes, elevator, flaps, lights, all the, and actually guys on all the stock aircraft, there's really one switch for lights and you get everything. And I'll get more into that on another review on this, but uh, essentially if you turn on the external lights, you get your landings, your strobes, your nav, and your beacon all at once. You can't pick and choose what you want, and interior lights are no different. If you turn on the interior lights, you get your instrument lights, your dome light. Uh, you know, you get everything. There's so far no way to adjust it, but that's kind of always been the mannerisms of uh, Microsoft's stock aircraft. So uh, uh, it's just un unfortunate at this point to see this is all the uh, input controls we have, guys. Really just really, really simple stuff. Um, you're not going to find a lot of deep uh, button mapping in here. Uh, Obviously, the aircraft are not difficult to use because they're just stock aircraft. You're not going to have to pull out a checklist to fly anything in this game. It's pretty much, so far, single-engine VFR-type uh, aircraft. Uh, so you're not going to need to map your uh, you know, APU switch start or something. But uh, it's unfortunate that you know if we do see add-ons for the title, uh, it's not in here yet. So hopefully the developer will be able to add a way to map in the stuff that really counts. Uh, so anyways, backing out of options, um, live, that'll just go ahead and pull up your, your page if you're signed into Xbox Live. About will, of course, take you to the credits, and you can quit out. Uh, I'm about to quit out on this first part of my review of Microsoft Flight. Um, I hope this gave you a good look at the menu system in Microsoft Flight. Uh, it's pretty simple. 
there's not a lot to uh, more in depth there. I skipped a couple things, but I'll go ahead and let you guys experience some of it. Uh, I, I hope you're enjoying the title. Of course, uh, feel free to thumbs up, thumbs down. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. Uh, I will be, of course, uh, reviewing Microsoft Flight further in follow-ups to this review. Uh, I just wanted to get through the menus in this first part and uh, show you my general thoughts. Uh, so far, my general thoughts have been pretty positive on this title. It, it looks good, and it's pretty easy to get into. And some of its shortcomings, such as no ATC in that, uh, you know, that's not a game breaker for me, guys. You know, the ATC in FSX was pretty weak. You know, it, it was very incorrect compared to the real world uh, ATC. So, you know, maybe it's better that we have a third party developer handle some of these things that Microsoft, uh, you know, that we would just not use even in FSX. And, you know, it kind of feels like a glaring omission not to have some of that stuff. But, you know, how many of us actually used it in FSX? Uh, you know, since we knew it, most of us knew it was very inaccurate, and most of us turned it off and used VATSIM or something like that. So, anyways, guys, hope this gave you a quick look and a good look at the menu system of Microsoft Flight. Um, I hope it gave you a good look at the options and uh, what to expect from this title. Uh, next, I'll be going into the uh, flight portion of my review, and I hope to see you then. Uh, of course, comment. Uh, on your thoughts on this review or your thoughts on Microsoft Flight. I always like reading them. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them for you guys or point you in the right direction. And I hope you stay tuned for more flights and reviews. Thanks again, guys.